Hey, honestly, if he keeps this up, that's Jake Paul 2024. With the last words on my lips, that I am a revolutionary. Hey, what's going on, YouTube? It's your boy, Superior, and thank you for watching Superior Thinking, where we are committed to an intellectual integrity and a moral honesty. And today, we're here to talk about someone I never thought I would be talking about. But today, we're talking about Mr. Jake Paul. And yes, we're talking about the Jake Paul that turned internet sensation for whatever reason to professional-ish boxer to like just you know might be pope next year who knows but today we're here to talk about something i think he accidentally stumbled on and with this channel we're not talking about like who jake paul is fighting and who i think i will you know who will win but he actually has something very interesting interesting to say so long story short he has some sort of beef with dana white who is the ufc's owner or uh co-founder whatever it is um he has an issue with him and it started off with like hey you do cocaine and hey you take steroids and it started with this whole you know drama that i'm not really interested in but jake paul he tweeted some really interesting uh information he he wants to do some sort of bet with mr dana and here's what he has to say he said one increase minimum fighter pay per fight to fifty thousand dollars at the moment it is now twelve thousand dollars two guarantee ufc fighters fifty percent of us ufc annual revenues uh that's one billion <laughs> in 2021 and three, provide long-term health care to all fighters. You previously said brain damage is part of the gig. Imagine the NFL saying that. There are many UFC alums who have public, uh, publicly said they are suffering from ba uh, brain damage. You have five days to accept and implement above by March 31st, 2022. Once implemented, I will immediately retire from boxing enter USADA and agree to a one fight deal with the UFC to fight weak chin George. Now, of course, Mr. Dana White has a response and with, with all the, the other stuff that is not even necessary to it, he didn't even really like challenge what Mr. Jake Paul had to say. Here's what he had to say. And that thing that you came out with today, Nobody on earth thinks that you really wrote that. You're too stupid. And for those of you that don't know, if you've ever watched one of his fights and you see when they do the stare down, the guy that's standing in the middle with the warlock nose and the big warlock ward on his face, apparently that's his manager. And that guy used to be an accountant for me. And let's just say this. He no longer works for me. And I think he's a scumbag. But if you two think that you can do it better than we do. Uh, you know, we're doing this whole thing. Get the fighters better than we do. Knock yourself out. Go start your own business. It's easy to do. Go st get the warlock on it. The warlock can get it started for you. So as you see, Mr. Dana White had no response to the, the three items that Jake Paul had presented and with some results. So if he was able to make those three things happen before a certain date, he would retire boxing. And of course, Mr. Dana White had to talk about, you know, cocaine and, and steroids and a whole bunch of other things that doesn't matter that kind of resembles politics today. You know what I'm saying? Like you would have candidates or people who are serving now, people will ask them straight up questions like, hey, how do you plan to solve A, B, and C and they will give you no substantive answer. They will give you nothing with substance. They would just kind of beat around a bush, blame it on the next person, blame it on a person before, and they would never answer directly the question. And like what we've seen with Kamala Harris and Charlemagne the God, he asked a direct question and said, hey, you didn't answer my question. And she got offensive about it because she's not used to someone saying, hey, answer my question. 
So she got all defensive. So one thing that I like that Jake Paul actually did was, and, and it could be just on accident. I don't think he's really concerned about these people. But one, he had a list of things that will directly impact these people. And not just like, you know, some like really broad request. Like it was specific down to the number and specific down to the date that he wants all of this done. And if we could do that as voters saying, hey, Mr. Joe Biden, I want you to saw, uh, to decrease the student loan debt by 10000 in three months. If you don't do it in three months, you fail. There's no if, ands, or buts. You fail. But we don't do that as voters. We just vote and just hope for the best. And another thing that I like that Jake Paul did was he's using his platform. He knows he has a platform. He knows his voice will be heard. This story right here was broadcasted everywhere. That's how I found it. And he knows the power of his words because of his platform and who he is. You know what I'm saying? Now, of course, <laughs> if Jake Paul took this a step further and was like, hey, Mr. President, I want people across the world to have at least a $20 minimum wage. I want health care for everybody. And I want this, that, and the third. And if you don't deliver this by this date, we're not going to vote for you. Now, if any celebrity stood up and said that, I think that would make a tremendous difference. And just like I always say, though, no matter who Jake Paul was or is or who he will soon become, it's hope for anybody. 